Well, uh, welcome to this talk. My name is Gala Malikpour, and today I will be showing how you can visualize some time labeled data using the ArcGIS Q, uh, NC++, as well as our toolkit. Uh, just a little bit of background about me. I have been with SG for slightly over five years now, uh, working on a couple of different C++ products. Um, and uh, as of about a couple of months ago, I switched teams to be um, SDK products, which is what I will be showcasing today. If you have any questions or uh, if you want to reach out, feel free. I have my email on this slide. Um, before we get into the um, demo, I just want to give a little bit of background about SG. At our core, we are a mapping technologies company, and our software allows our customers to solve the world's most uh, complex challenges. We have solutions that you can use to apply location-based analytics to business practices, and this enables the um, businesses to visualize and analyze the data they have and make them more, look more min meaningful. And this allows them to collaborate and share those data as maps, apps, and reports um, very easily. We are headquartered in Southern California, but we do have offices all around the world. And even though today I will be using our C++ product uh, with Qt, we do have products ranging from um, anywhere from Android to Java to iOS to macOS to JavaScript. So if there are any of those products uh, interest you, uh, feel free to reach out to me and I'd be happy to share more information about those with you. And now as far as the purpose of this talk goes, I just want to showcase a really quick way to build a desktop application, actually a cross-platform application that allows you to visualize uh, data in a very short time. Um, we will be using the, um, the Esri uh, templates for this purpose and we're going to be using the ArcGIS SDK for Qt and the ArcGIS toolkit to uh, use the already existing UI components. The data I'm going to be using is a time-aware layer. What that means is that there's going to be a number of features on this layer, and each feature has a time range, a start date, and an end date. And this allows us to, to determine in what time range we want to show that um, data on the map. So for example, if a feature has a date range of say, for example, September 1st, 2005 to September 10th, 2005, as soon as the date range for the date extent for that map goes out of that range, we're going to make that feature invisible. Um, the, the data comes with a feature table that includes all of those dates, and the JSON of the feature layer is going to include all of the necessary information for um, the demo that we're going to be building. And the demo we're going to be building is basically a map that contains the hurricane data from September through December of uh, 2005. And this uh, feature layer is going to contain all of the information uh, we need to visualize this data. It, this information in, includes start and end times, time intervals, a bunch of different information. I have included the URL to that feature layer here, um, but if you were to go through this URL and look at the time info JSON, you can see, for example, the time extent starts on September 1st of 2005 through December 31st of 2005. The time interval is one, which means that once we build our app and use the time slider uh, from the ArcGIS toolkit, it will be incrementing the days by one, and the unit uh, is Esri time unit days. Now, if you were using this for your application, depending on the type of data you have, it might make more sense to use something like months or years or even centuries. But in this case, because we have a pretty small window of uh, four months or so, it um, days is how we want to visualize it. Now there's going to be two products um, that we are going to be using to make this demo. The first one is the ArcGIS Runtime for Qt SDK. And this SDK um, allows you to build cross-platform desktop applications, uh, desktop and mobile applications. And it, you can uh, use uh, features such as mapping, geocoding, routing, geoprocessing. And uh, the Qt SDK comes in two development environments. You can either use C++ or QML, um, but given the nature of this conference and that we're all a um, bunch of C++ nerds, I'm going to be using the C++ SDK to uh, build this sample. 
I see there are um, some hands being raised. I will wait until the end of the presentation uh, to answer questions if that's okay. Um, now, the next product that we're going to be using is the ArcGIS Runtime Toolkit for Qt. This is an open source project that you can um, open. You can uh, It's hosted in our GitHub repository. So you can go play around, uh, take a look at it, and um, just you can change the implementation to kind of like fit your needs. This is basically a toolbox that contains a bunch of different UI components and utilities that help uh, simplify your Qt app development. So instead of in implementing something like a pop-up or a time slider from scratch, you can just uh, import our toolkit into your project and use uh, features straight out of the box. Most of these toolkit components have a bunch of customization options, so you can make it uh, so it really fits your um, program's needs. And uh, like I said, you can just basically plug and play various UI pieces. There's not much of an um, learning curve to it. If you are interested in taking a look, you can find it at our um, GitHub repository. And to use it, all you have to do is clone the repository and import the path to that toolkit in your dot profile in the Qt Creator. And the second thing you need to do is register your components in main.cpp. And to do that, all you have to do is include the register header file and call register components in your, um, in your uh, main function. Now, in this sample, we're going to be using only one UI component, which is the time slider. And this time slider provides a number of controls to visualize and step through temporal data. This gives you a play and pause button where you can uh, animate the data or you can pause it and uh, use the forward and back button to increment one day at a time uh, to see how the data changes. And like I said, in this case, we're using the hurricane tracks from uh, the year 2005. So you can see how the patterns change and kind of how the, um, the hurricane um, migrates throughout the year. Once you use the time slider component, it will initialize all of the required values using the data from the layers. So uh, as I showed earlier, the JSON includes all of that information for you and you can customize some of the UI elements to make, make it look uh, seamless with your application. And so this is what our end product is going to be uh, look like. So as you can see, there's the play and pause button, forward, back, and at the bottom, there's the time range. Right now, it's set to the full extent of the time range, um, which due to some um, time differences, this one says August 31st or September 1st, um, depending on the, the um, time zone. But you can narrow down this time range and, um, and just um, animate it that way. So now how, let's see how we can build this on the fly ourselves. Um, let me close this one. So all you have to do is create a new project. And Ezra comes with a number of uh, pre-made templates that basically set up the environment for you. Um, in this, ex in this uh, demo, I'm going to use the C++ um, template. So I'll just choose this, give it a name. And um, you want to put it where your SDK is cloned, the ArcGIS Qt SDK. So mine's going to go here. Um, the category, because I have, um, I'm kind of showing features, I'll just pick features, display name, and sample name can just be cppcon. And um, like I said, we are going to be using a feature layer. You can either feed it the feature layer here and it will pretty much give, set, up, set it up for you uh, as soon as you create the project, or you can manually add it later. But because it's a lot, we already have the feature layer URL. I'm going to paste it here and uh, use compiler. Okay, so now we have our project set up. Um, there's a couple of things we need to do. First thing is you need um, an API key. To do that, it's free. You just have to go to ArcGIS online and create an account. And once you create an account, it will give you your API key. Um, so I'm going to be using one. I'll have to delete it after this presentation, but, and then if we take a look at our CPP con code, you can see because we passed the feature layer URL while, while we were setting up the project, it's taking care of everything for us. I created a feature table with that URL and then created a feature layer from that feature table and added it to the map. This will 
allow us to view that layer on the map. Now, if I just run this um, straight out of the box, You can see the layer, we can zoom and pan, pan around and look at it. It's it's good, but it's not quite what we were hoping for. It doesn't really do justice or give us the full picture of how this data changes throughout the time. So we're going to uh, make it a little bit more uh, exciting. Um, like I said, we're going to be using the toolkit. And for that, there are two things we need to do. The first step is to import the path in our dot, um, dot profile. And um, in the interest of time, I have it um, saved to the clipboard, but uh, you basically give it a path to where your toolkit lives and then check if that path is valid, are uh, you included in your project? And you might have noticed that as soon as I pasted this, the toolkit um, directory popped up under my project. And um, this is where all of the different UI components live. You can see we have overview map, we have flash image, like pop pop scale bar. Um, in today's example, I'm going to be using the time sliders um, UI component, but there are a number of tools and they're they're pretty uh, well documented online if you're interested in learning more about what each of them do. Okay, now the first step was to import this. The second step is to um, register the toolkit components. And to do that, all you have to do is include the um, register header in your main file and call register components in your main function. So now we should be ready to use the, um, the time slider in our sample. So the U, all of the UI components live in cppcon.qml. This is where you determine what your application is gonna look like. So um, we were going to add a time slider to our map view and to do that, um, well, before I do that, I actually need to import the toolkit in our QML. So we have access to it. And now I can just create a time slider within our map view and assign it to geo view. Okay, so now let's see what it looks like. All we had to do was create a time slider in map view and assign it to geo view. Okay, as you guys can probably see, uh, the time sliders here, it's initialized with the time range and we have the, um, you can customize the full time extent to be narrowed and you can play and step through the, the, the um, hurricane tracks to see how it changes. Um, it's okay, but it doesn't look quite right. It's in a bit of an awkward place. Um, so we're going to make some customizations to make it um, look a little bit uh, nicer. And for that, all you have to do is uh, create anchors. So we want the bottom to be at the bottom of the screen, uh, left to basically extend from left to right of uh, the entire screen. Okay. Now let's give it another try. And now we can already tell it, this looks a lot nicer um, and more seamless with the rest of our application. Um, again, like last time, you can narrow down uh, the date, you can uh, step through and uh, it's incrementing uh, one day at a time because that's what our JSON specified. You can pause it and go at it at like different, um, if you want to step through it manually or you can animate it. But yeah, so this is a cross-platform application that's ready to be deployed on um, Mac, Linux, Windows, Android, and iOS uh, fresh out of the box. And it took probably around 10 minutes to put together. Um, so yeah, that's the demo. And I just want to very quickly go over, oops, not from the beginning.
very briefly, I just wanted to go over the um, some of the resources that will be helpful if you're interested in trying this out for yourself. If you want to um, look up the Qt API um, and our SDK, um, you can take a look at it at developers.arcjs.com slash Qt. Uh, for more information on the toolkit, you can look at the toolkit API reference um, and also our GitHub, um, our toolkit, toolkit GitHub repository. If you want to learn how to set up the SDK, we have uh, documentations for a number of different uh, environments such as uh, Windows, Linux, and uh, Mac OS. And uh, last but not least, if you are interested in learning more about Esri or um, some of the opportunities that we have, uh, you can take a look at the Esri Careers uh, website or reach out to me and I'd be happy to share more information with you. But yeah, so that's all the presentation. And I think now I'll go ahead and uh, open the room to questions if there are any. Um, do you mostly then configure JSON as an end user or do you end up needing some C++? So it's a little bit of both. Um, in the Qt uh, slash C++ example, you want your feature layer data to contain everything that you have. So for example, if the full extent uh, time or the time interval was missing, the time slider wouldn't be able to initialize. Now, that's something that we actually um, want to fix because in the iOS, um, version of the um, <clears throat> toolkit, you can overwrite those values. So if the interval is missing, you can just manually say, put this for an interval, but Q doesn't allow us to do that. So if it's not in the JSON, you're kind of out of luck unless you can manually fix the JSON and then um, kind of like you have to fix the data as opposed to having customization options. But we do have an open issue to give you more customization options for Qt. And I'm hoping that hopefully in the not too far out future, we'll have that. So if your data is not perfectly complete, you can manually add that in C++. Alrighty, and what is the advantage of using this versus uh, Tableau? Um, SAS, is there a charge? Um, there's, there's no charge for this. So the demo that I showed you is completely free of charge. Um, the only thing you might have noticed is that um, if I go back um, to the slide, uh -oh, where is it? Um, you'll see that, um, well, in this case, this is probably not a great example because the watermark is under the time slider, but the placement of watermark changes. So you, the, the Esri developer could pop up like maybe somewhere else where it's visible, um, but it's free as is, but if you wanna remove the watermark, then you want to pay for a different kind of licensing but anything that I've used in this demo is completely free. 